Um, everyone, good morning, Mayor Gondek, for uh, joining us um, on this special occasion of Black History Month, um, special edition of Diversity Magazine uh, TV. And of course, uh, we've met before. My name is Moji Taiwo. I'm the host of the Immigrant Experience Show. But we, we are having a special um, uh, interview with you for the Diversity Magazine for the Black History Month, which of course starts this month. Um, if you have any message, what are the messages you have for our Black History Month community? And of course, we have the Chinese Lunar Year uh, happening right now, among other things that's happening in the city. The city is thriving, it's uh, exciting now. I saw you on the news yesterday declaring the, what is the, the light show? Chinook Blast. Chinook Blast. Last year I went, I participated with my grandson. It was fun. It was yeah. really fun. So what messages do you have for our Black History Month uh, or Black community and our Chinese uh, community members? Moji, first off, thanks so much for having me on. It's a pleasure to see you again. It's been a few months since we were together. Um, hello, everyone. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reverse the order. And, you know, obviously a very happy Lunar New Year, a happy Chinese New Year to everyone. Um, in Calgary, we know that there's a very strong foundation of the Chinese community just by virtue of the activity that you see in places like Chinatown. And when you see a city with a strong Chinatown where people are engaged and the businesses are, you know, happy to be there and they've been there for many years and many generations in some cases, it really is a testament to the fact that Calgary has been a place that people wish to live when they come from other places. And I hope that's the inspiration for newcomers from other places as well. Specifically with Black History Month, I have to tell you, I can talk about, you know, statistics, I can talk about population, but I want to talk about the stories that have taught me about Black history. I had a friend named Noelle Fogo. She lived across from me and she's an absolutely lovely woman. And she used to tell me about her sister. Her sister is a historian and she said, my sister is a filmmaker and she's telling the story of Black Albertans. I and think I friend, know who you're going to talk about. <laughs> Cheryl, it's Cheryl Fogo, right? Yeah. And I had not met Cheryl yet. And Noelle passed away, very sadly. And so the first time I met Cheryl, I believe was at Noelle's funeral. And I just remember thinking, what a wonderful woman, what a kind soul, just like her sister. And then Cheryl's daughter, Miranda Martini, performed um, a song at the reception for the funeral. And she was just so brilliant and so lovely. And I just remember thinking, what wonderful people. And then Cheryl came out with her film about John Ware. And I went and I just remember being so moved and so disappointed that I didn't know this history. So sad that these are the stories that were not told to me when I was a student. And it took me until I was 50 to understand the history of Black Albertans. So, you know, those are two of my inspirations. If you go to contemporary Calgary right now, Simone Elizabeth Saunders has the most amazing exhibit. And she talks about Black women and their power. And when you see her work, it is absolutely stunning and moving. Um, Lanry Ajayi is- Larry Ajayi. Okay. Brilliant and lovely <laughs> yes. and so kind. And he interviewed me during the campaign and we just, we danced a little, we had a lot of fun, you know, and he's- he, He's me. one of my mentees. He is absolutely <laughs> lovely. And then when I look at other advocates in the community, when I think about Heather Campbell and I think about Courtney Walcott, who's on council yes. with me now, yes. And the number of things that they taught me about Black Lives Matter and why we need to have proper police reform. And then I look at Dr. Melinda Smith, who's the first, um, I think she's the vice president of equity, diversity and inclusion at the University of Calgary. And the things she has taught me about systemic change that's needed. Mm -hmm. My understanding of Black history is rooted in the people that I've had an opportunity to meet. And it's their stories. It's their narrative. It's their art. It's what they're able to say in their spoken voice that really hits home to me. So that's what I want to do for Black History Month is get those stories out so that people like me who previously had very limited knowledge understand more. Thank you, Mayor Gondek. And on that note too, I will I invite you to read a copy of my book, 
I do okay. have a book out too. Well, it's been out for a few years now. And it talks about the, the challenges, the trials, and the contributions of Black people like myself into our community as well. Just, you know, Google my name and it will come up. <laughs> I have a couple of questions for you um, on matters that uh, is um, important to our community as a Calgarian. So let me jump right into it by asking you, um, when you and your council members uh, got in, the very first motion that uh, you made was in dealing with climate change in Calgary. So my question to you is, how, what do you want Calgarians to know about your vision in dealing with this matter? Um, in response to your specific question, this council was incredibly interested in making sure that we were sending a clear signal to Calgarians as well as any potential global investors that we take our commitment to the environment seriously. And I can tell you that in speaking with leaders from the energy sector, they felt incredibly well supported knowing that we were going to debate this declaration. We actually had an energy leaders breakfast that morning where we explained to them that we felt as a local government, perhaps we had not done enough to indicate that we are equally committed to a pathway to net zero. So we have simply come in line with the aspirations of the energy sector. And I can tell you when I went down to Houston for the World Petroleum Congress, people knew Calgary was a progressive city. People understood that we are looking at sustainable solutions for energy production. And they were very excited about thinking whether or not they could send some talent our way or whether they would like to make an investment in our city for the energy transformation work we're doing. Well, thank you for that. And you know, with every initiative and every project, there are always the naysayers. So what are your plans or how are you um, going to deal with the resistance or skepticism to people who does not believe that there is a climate change in Calgary? Moji, it's a good question. I think what happens sometimes is people take polarizing views of situations. And so they believe that if you are interested in protecting the environment, that you are against the energy sector. And nothing could be further from the truth, because I can tell you the energy sector itself is the one that has demonstrated leadership in having to do things differently. So I would say to people, rather than getting caught up in polarization, let's look at what it actually means for our economy. It means more jobs. There is research that was done that says if we properly invest in our clean tech sector, it will result in, I believe, 160,000 jobs, as well as GDP um, of $60 billion by 2050. I mean, these are things that the sector itself has researched. And so we need to be aware of the promise that is held for us if we commit ourselves to focusing on the environment. That's very good. Thank you very much for that. Um, also, um, the downtown, our downtown office towers, they are in dear need of help. What is your team, um, the city is doing to help rectify that? Moji, it's a really good question, and I can tell you that our previous council, the one that I served on as the Ward 3 councillor, um, we were incredibly fortunate to have had a report brought to us almost a year ago. It was spring of 2021, and it was a report that was developed over a period of time by a lot of different stakeholders. So we had community leaders, we had business leaders, commercial real estate experts, urban planners, as well as our own administration weighing in and saying if we want to really focus on revitalizing the core these are the actions that need to be taken and here's the budget that needs to accompany it it was very well done very well supported council committed to it we invested um 200 million dollars at that time 80 million dollars of which was uh, an investment in arts commons and ensuring that that transformation happens properly i think it was 45 million dollars at that point that was an incentive program for anyone wanting to convert some of those vacancies towards residential. And that program was immediately taken up by the private sector. It was oversubscribed. And so in November of this year, as a brand new council, 
we invested an additional 55 million in that incentive program and we are seeing all kinds of interest to convert those spaces not only into residential but a different way of doing business so we have made a firm commitment with a budget um, as a local government and i can tell you with other cities that i've spoken with like denver and pittsburgh and houston when you make that commitment the federal funding and the provincial funding is easier to attract and the private sector funding which is critical for this program is already coming in all right all right so i'm going to jump into the uh, the next question which is a uh, recent occurrence the, co the government of Canada recently announced a $3 million investment in Alberta Clean and, uh, Technology to support the new energy transition center in Calgary. So, Mayor, how does this investment impact Calgary's economic recovery, um, the downtown office space vacancies, and of course, how does it tie into the Climate Action Declaration? Excellent question, Moji, and I was really happy to be a part of that announcement. Um, the federal government coming here and believing in the work that we're doing is a strong signal that we have got this right. And I can tell you that um, Kevin Krausert from Avatar Innovations has really been one of the most persistent Calgarians in trying to attract investment to our city to look at sustainability solutions. And that uh, uh, Clean Energy Transition Center is an amazing opportunity for a lot of young professionals to do some meaningful work. There is a carbon removal accelerator program competition that's attached to that center. And I have had the chance to meet with many of those young people. And here's what they've said. We love being located in this building. It was an Aspen property. It's called the Ampersand, and it went through quite a redo, and it's gorgeous inside. And they said, we feel like we're welcomed here. It's a space where we can do good work, but it's also situated very close to the things that we want as young professionals. It's close to Chinatown. It's close to other restaurants. It's close to so many things, and they feel that they can make a life for themselves and that downtown is a community. So they're very interested and excited about that. And I think the federal investment shows us that this is a government that understands that the private sector has a very big role to play in how we address our climate and environment challenges. I'm happy to see that. And as the mayor, I have every opportunity to try to connect the businesses located in our city that are doing great innovative work with the ministries that need to understand what's happening here. And I take that role very seriously. Thank you. And that rolls right into the next question is that lots of our young professionals in the, in the most recent time have been leaving the city in droves to other areas or other parts of the country. So um, I was going to ask you, what is the city going to do or doing to, um, you know, to encourage these young professionals to stay home and be part of the recovery? Moji, it's, a, it's an interesting question because when you look at the actual statistics, there's not really the data to support the fact that people are leaving in droves. I think it, it's more of a feeling and impression. And yes, there are a lot of young professionals that are saying, I don't see myself reflected in this city. I don't know that this is the city for me. I feel like the city is sort of rooted in its past. And that's the image and the reputation that we need to change. And that's the one thing, you know, the data does support something very specific. And if you don't mind, let me just give you a few facts and figures. In the Most clean certainly, tech yes. Thank you. Yes. In the clean tech sector in Calgary, we are really seeing some tremendous successes. Um, we saw a report from Waterloo Economic uh, Development that looked at all of North America. Calgary is top five, one of the top five centers for clean tech in, in North, North America. America. Wow, yeah. that's great. This is really good news. We are an emerging market for clean technology. And when um, Calgary Economic Development looked at our sector in, in our city specifically, it turns out that 51% of clean tech startups are first time founders. They've never done this before. And 28% of those people were born outside of Canada. 23% of them are women. So when you start diversifying the economy in terms of the types of businesses, you start to see diversity in leadership. And that's really a strong signal to newcomers that this is a city 
that will embrace you. We will embrace your ideas and you will find a home for yourself here. That's the good news story we need to be telling. I love that. I love that. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing that. So, well, that brings us to the end of this uh, interview. So I want to thank you very much for making time for us. You are a wonderful public servant and um, we appreciate you. We appreciate all the talents you surround yourself with, the counselors, the advisors, and everybody that's uplifting us in the city of Calgary. Thank you very much for joining us on this ep uh, episode or edition of the Black History Month uh, interview with the Diversity Magazine um, TV. Thank you so much. And we will Thank connect you. again in person. Sounds very good. Thanks so much for the opportunity.